Maybe Vivek has just told them. And if that's the case, if Vivek has just informed them like psionically or something telepathically to expect me and that I am the Nervarine, the real ass deal, why not just psionically communicate with them, get all that information back and then give it to me? Well, maybe, oh, uh, I guess because I have, a, because of prophecy. <laughs> that solves everything, right? Right, it has to be done in a particular way. Otherwise we risk severing the thread of prophecy, right? Not just by killing someone, but by doing it in the wrong fucking way. Otherwise, Vivek will, like... <laughs> if Vivek tells too many people in the wrong way about what the fuck is up, Vivek will get, at the bottom of their screen, a little update about... <laughs> about, like, the threat of prophecy being severed. <laughs> and then Vivek will have to... <laughs> kill themselves and then go check in with Yagram Bagard. When we had last left the Nerevarine, they had been summoned by the Tribunal Temple by none other than Vivek, the living god, to meet at the palace of Vivek with Vivek. And so they did, and they talked a whole lot. Yes, it turned out that a lot of the fabrications of the Tribunal Temple had come to light, but so too had more questions and more uncertainties around the exact nature of the death of Inderil Nerevar many, many years ago. However, although things with that were somewhat uncertain, what was not uncertain was that Dagoth Ur needed to die because they posed an imminent and powerful threat to not just Vardenfell, not just Morrowind, but perhaps to all of Tamriel and even all of Nern. For inside of the Citadel at Red Mountain, being constructed using the heart of a dead god, Lorcan. A new Numidium was being constructed. The Akulakan. And now the Nervrine set out and set forth to begin some of the many plans and machinations that would put an end to Voren Dagoth. This is the Elder Scrolls III. Morrowind. This is Morrowind Mondays. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's get on out of here. Oh, well, actually, before we do that, let's take all of our fun notes, huh? There we go. And we'll, like I said, read these toward the end of videos and whatnot. And they are quite lengthy. As you can see, they are extremely lengthy. So, hey, <laughs> we've got that to look forward to and all of that. All right. Now, the unfortunate thing, though, is I would love to get all these red before we actually finish the main quest. But like I was touching on earlier, as we were, like, wrapping up with the fifth trial and whatnot and being called to head out here, this part of the main quest wraps up extraordinarily quick. Like, it sounds like we have a lot more to do, but in truth, it can be accomplished fairly quickly, right? Like, what what we need to set out to do, I'm pretty sure in, like, part one, or not part one, but volume one of Morrowind Mondays, really only took about, like, three or four videos. So I think maybe what we do is we call them a little bit earlier and devote a large segment of the video to actually, like, reading and parsing each of the notes, you know? Because I, like I said, it, I do feel like we should read them all before we do what has to be done. Or we, like, read the last one as we have done it, you know? I'm not sure. Also, here's another question. I'm not even sure about this one. Here, let's turn on our speedy boots. But, should we check in with all of our old friends and shit? Like, the quest doesn't call for it. And I'm fairly certain, like, you could just, like, be off on your way and all that, but... Should we actually 
check in with like Urshalaku camp, Holomayan, shit like that. I kind of feel like we ought to, on the off chance that like they have something to say, because it really feels like they should, especially at this point after we have spoken with Vivek. Why? Well, but I don't know if they that. actually have anything to say. Hmm. Actually, you know what? That's a great idea. Let's do that. We can take the boat over to Ebenhart, and then we can take the Ebenhart boat over to Holomayan, and maybe that will give us some insight as to whether or not we'll get any additional, like, exposition. I'm not sure that we do, though. You know? And, like, I, I want to say Yagram Bagard or Divay Fear may have information. They may have something extra to say, Make but I don't know for certain. Outlander. Hey, Nervereen. It's me. Everyone is talking about it. The curse upon the Nervereen is lifted. The persecution of the dissident priests is ended. Vivek says, you are the incarnate of prophecy. That's hopeful news. But no one will sleep well until you have gone to Red Mountain and destroyed Dagoth Ur and the Sixth House. Tell me some Morrowind lore. Okay. About 50% of Vardenfell's inhabitants are Dunmer. The other half are the rest. <laughs> right? Does that hold up as true in future installments? I don't know. I feel like that's definitely not the case in Skyrim, right? Like, they... Like, the others are in roughly equal proportion, they say. Purportedly, right? And it, it feels about right. You know? It sounds about right. But, I don't know if it's true in Skyrim, right? I think... I think, like, there's clear minorities and um, majorities below, what do you call it, Nords, right? Like, obviously, Nords are definitely the most populous of them all. Let's see. Let's go for... Fuck. When should we go? One more hour? No, we're way past dawn. <laughs> okay. Let's go... How about... Eight? Hey, perfect. Okay. But I'm pretty sure, like, Bosmer are fairly underrepresented in Skyrim because, you know, there's just not much of a reason for them to be there. Like, the geological location is makes it inconvenient. There's no, like, lore reason why there would particularly be a high amount of Bosmer in Skyrim during the events of Skyrim, right? Whereas... There's a good reason for there to be a bunch of Dunmer in Skyrim. There's a good reason for there to be a decent amount of Altmer in Skyrim. And of course, all of the neighboring provinces as well, which includes Morrowind, of course. Right. Let's see over here. I'm waiting. Hmm. What do you want? Can we ask anything new? I mean, I know you're not like... None of y'all are the main folks here. What say you? Huh. Oh. We can ask you about the Crater Citadels. Mara Milo. Thank you, Lyle Schnub, for rescuing me. Now I'll stay here at Holomayan with Master Barello and assist him with the monastery's library. Crater Citadels? Five ancient Dwemer citadels in the crater of Red Mountain are occupied by Dagathur and his ash vampire kin. But you won't oh, tell me wonder. anymore. Welcome, okay. Outland. Gilvis Barrow? I will listen no. to Or Barello? No. Okay. Weird. Is it opportune for us to head out and over to... Oh, shit. Let's take care of this rat. To... Divaith Fear's place from here? Eh, I don't know. I mean, would it be quicker from here? Or... Yeah, we could go up to Sadrith Mora. Can we even get to Sadrith Mora directly from... Fuck, I don't know if we even can. Well, here, we can check real quick. Because I'm fairly certain Yagram Bagarn will say something. 
right? I think so. If not, we can just travel right back real fast. Let's see, travel to... Yeah, fuck, we have to go all the way around, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, though. One more check. Okay, tell Brunora. My time okay. is precious, so make it quick. Oh, fuck. Tell Brunora's way down here. <laughs> okay. Sadrith Mora? Eh? No. Okay, Molagmar? If we travel from Molagmar, where do you where do you take us? I will listen, Outlander, but make it quick. Oh shit. Okay. Quick yeah. Day, Outlander. <laughs> I, I think our time. best bet is to just go from Holomayan, right? I only go. have a few moments. Is there is coast region. And let's wait eh, four hours. There we go. We have not been accosted by the Make Dark Brotherhood again Outlander. recently. Amazingly enough. Okay. Because I want to say, doesn't Yagram Bagarn have something to say in the event that you need to go through, like, the alternate route to get um, Wraithguard or whatever? I'm not sure, though. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to find out. And hey, you know what? It works out too, that way we have- <laughs> you know what? It totally works out because we do need to make extra time. Like I said, this wraps up way quicker than you would expect, right? Once more le lending credence to- or credence. I isn't it credence because it's like credential rather than like creed? Yeah. Lending credence to the idea that the final parts of the main story are a bit rushed, you know. Okay. Which, I don't know, I guess thankfully, all of the very interesting twists and turns of the Morrowind storyline have already been sort of dealt with. Like, or not dealt with, but unveiled. You know, all of the stuff about the nature of the Tribunal Temple, about Vivek and Nerevar way back in the day, as well as Vorin. Well, I don't know. Like, you could definitely do with more exposition there, I feel. I feel like it could it could benefit from it. Right. Okay. Let's head on out over here. Oh, shot spot. Oh, God. Should we take care of this asshole? Why not? Good. Search you. Oh, you don't even have any bone meal. Okay. But yeah, I'm pretty sure... Well, may maybe you actually have to sever the thread of prophecy in order to access, like, Yagram Bagarin's additional dialogue. I don't know. I Like like I've said before in the past, I've never actually gone through that route. We probably should someday in the distant future. You know? I wonder if going that alternate route would have any reactivity to... Because this is the cool thing, right? I wonder if that would have any reactivity to what we'll encounter, honestly, fairly shortly, in Tamriel rebuilt content, right? Because that's the fun thing about that, is that, like, because it's still a work in progress, and just how it's being done and handled, right, after the fact it allows you to make that level of reactivity, right? I have no idea. Okay. Like, I'm, I don't even know if baseline, if there's even that much reactivity to you having completed the main quest, you know? Okay. So, we need head over here. Good. Should we check in with Devaith? Maybe. I mean, why not, right? We're right here. Let's see. Oh, didn't we bind our levitate item? Or did we not? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. There we are. Hey. 
Now you only t only talk about Delina Mondas. Huh. Hello, Lyle Schnub. How are you doing? Bit of bad news, I'm afraid. The potion doesn't seem to work on others. Tried it on two hopeless cases. Killed them outright. Deader than a garlic snail. But is there anything I can help you with? Tell me about Delina Mondas. So you managed to set her free? Why tell me about it? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, she was the woman being quote unquote held there. May even though like all that you see, <laughs> like she was being held there, but like it, nobody really not actively. She was passively being held there. <laughs> right? Like from her point of view, it is understandable to not try and escape when you know how, like, immensely powerful the people are that you're dealing with, right? <laughs> like, it's it's a little touch and go of a situation. All right. Let's do a quick save. This may all turn out for nothing, right? Okay. We should be on peaceful terms with all the corpus folk in here. Let's see. Over this way. Hey. Oh, right, yeah, we know your voice, don't we? You sound kind of like this. Hmm. <laughs> so it's you again. What brings you to visit Yagram Bagarn, Master Crafter and Last Living Dwarf? Huh. Yeah, I don't think you have anything new. Weird. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's only by way of doing some killing. Right? You sever the thread of prophecy. Maybe killing Vivek is what activates the additional dialogue on Yagram Bagarn. Huh. Maybe we're too far along because we already got the instructions and stuff from Vivek. Right? Because like we said earlier, you can totally bust in there and kill the shit out of Vivek without really having done any of this. Right? Okay. And you know what? I'm not even sure when we'll be able to do it. I was about to say it would be fun to try it out with Skywind, but just as well, I would love to see Skywind's interpretation and adaptation of the Morrowind main quest, you know? So I don't know if I want to go like a weird route there. I'm not even sure if that's something I want. Right? Hmm. All right. Well, Let's recall. I I guess nobody is going to really have fucking anything to say. I'm going to bet on... Oh shit, we're out of Magicka. <laughs> I'm going to bet on the fact that, hopefully, Nabani Mesa has nothing new to say either. Otherwise, that would be quite unfortunate because she's one of the few people that we are opting out of visiting. Oh gosh. Can I even recall? There we go. Good. I think we should drop off here real quick? Probably. Like, for example, glass boots and mountain spirit. Glass storm blade. We could drop that off too. But do we want to? Hmm. Because we could pawn that off if we really wanted. Yeah, maybe we hold on to that one weapon. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Okay, let's repair up too. Good. And then let's haul ass out over to Ghost Gate, right? I believe that's where we have to go. Let's see. So this says where we have to go to get all this shit. Huh. It doesn't actually- our journal actually does not say what to do? Hang on, let's cheat. We're gonna read ahead a little bit. What we actually need to do. Let's see here. Let's see. Oh, we still got the directions to Kai's. Well, I guess I can just... I keep forgetting I have this handy-dandy, useful little bit here. Okay, plans to defeat. Yada yada, we'll read all of this thoroughly in a bit. 
Series of aggressive raids to scout inside the ghost fence. Phase 1. Raids inside the ghost fence. The tribunal, ordinators, and Buyan armagers are familiar with the terrain and will provide maps and current intelligence reports. The region inside the ghost fence is dangerous, and the Nervarine will need to be familiar with its particular challenges. After measuring skills and resources against Dagother's defenses, the Nervarine will know better how to pace a campaign, alternating raids and improve with improving skills, getting better equipment, and stockpiling resources. Right. Yeah, I I want to say we check in at Ghost Fence, right? I'm fairly certain. Okay, oh here, let's do a um, CV intervention, right? Good. Whew! Managed to pull it off with a little magicka. Are we completely out? No, we've got one unit remaining. Wow. Okay. Good, good, good. And then... We can head over to... Aldrune, and we just have to run the rest of the way, right? Yeah. Okay, there we are. We could, like, Elm CVRS out of there and all that, but I don't know. Like, partway through the journey, we could Elm CV, and I think it will take you to Ghostgate, but I'm not sure where that cutoff point is, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> the alternative is that you cast Elm CV Intervention and you whoosh back to Alderun while you're halfway through the journey, which, that's no fucking good. Okay. There we are. Good. It's amazing that the ordinators and Boolean armagers up here know to expect me, right? Like, like if they do have additional information and scouting shit, like, how do they know? <laughs> right? How, how has information already traveled that fast? Have they, like sent wizard information? Have they, like, teleported wizard's missives? Maybe that's it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe Vivek has just told them. And if that's the case, if Vivek has just informed them, like, psionically or something, telepathically, to expect me and that I am the Nervarine, the real-ass deal, if that's the case, why not just psionically communicate with them, get all that information back, and then give it to me, right? Well, maybe- oh, uh, I guess because I have a- because of prophecy, right? <laughs> that solves everything, right? Right, it has to be done in a particular way, otherwise we risk severing the thread of prophecy, right? Not just by killing someone, but by doing it in the wrong fucking way, you know? There we are. Right. Okay. Otherwise, Vivek will, like... <laughs> if Vivek tells too many people in the wrong way about what the fuck is up, Vivek will get, at the bottom of their screen, a little update about... <laughs> about, like, the threat of prophecy being severed. <laughs> and then Vivek will have to... Uh... <laughs> kill themselves and then go check in with Yagram Bagarn. <laughs> And get, uh, get another version of Wraith Card. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Let's see. Tower of Dusk. Let's pop a quick save. Just in case. Good. Like, we should be A-OK -okay with the Ordinators and whatnot, right? Oh, shit! Those were my... Oh, those were the glass boots I swap off and on of. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, it's fine. That's fine. Let's see. I'm waiting. Nilvan Drothen, hey. Hello, Lyle Schnub. The Archcanon has announced that Lord Vivek has selected you as a champion of the temple in the war against Dagathur and the Sixth House. It's very confusing, but we have faith in Lord Vivek, and we will pray for your quest. Can I help you? Are you looking for some- Okay, yada yada. 
How about... Let's ask about Vivek. At once brave and honorable, and cunning and devious, Lord Vivek is a rare combination of the virtues of flamboyant adventurer and prudent statesman. Temple? The Tribunal Temple is the native religion of civilized Morrowind. They worship- they- <laughs> they worship three god kings. She's already decided on becoming a dissident. <laughs> she's right here and right now, she's renouncing it all. <laughs> she's- she's putting stuff together, right? She's piecing it all together. Lord Vivek has announced that I'm the Nerevarine and all that? Uh, okay, something's not adding up. <laughs> she's about right. She already got her, like, letter of invitation to Holomayan and all that. She's sol she's working out the riddle right now. <laughs> They worship three god kings, Almalexia, Sothasil, and Vivek, who are known together as the Tribunal. We usually just call it the Temple. Fair enough. Ghost Fence? The Ghost Fence was created and is sustained by the divine powers of Vivek and the Tribunal. Ghost Gate? Ghost Gate is garrisoned by the Ordinators and the Buoyant Armagers. And House Redrin maintains a hostel for pilgrims. Okay. Let's ask about the Ordinators and Bullion Armagers. Ordinators? Grandmaster Burel Salah is the chief Ordinator on Vardenfell. And the Armagers. The Bullion Armagers is a small military order of the Temple, exclusively dedicated to and answering to Lord Vivek. Which is such an odd dichotomy, right? That you have the Bullion Armagers and the Ordinators, right? There's like two levels of secret police going on. Huh. Maybe it, maybe it deals in like what all they handle, right? Well, no, because they, they, they often frequently handle a lot of the same shit. Yeah, I guess this is it. It, it purely is about who dictates orders to to them but is Vivek even any more dictating orders to the Buyan armagers at this point I have no idea we'll have to talk to one at least okay how about hmm tribunal like loving ancestors the tribunal guards and counsels us like stern parents they punish our sins and errors like generous relatives they share their bounty among the greatest and least, according to their needs. I've heard that one before. Tribunal Temple, same, same. Okay, Crater Citadels. Oh, here we go. The ancient Dwemer Citadels on Red Mountain are no longer known by their Dwemer names, but now take the names of their, Dag their Dagoth lords, Indusil, Odrosil, Viminal, Turi Nulal and Dagothur. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. You know what? Why is it called Dagothur? Is this is is it like Vorin Dagoth like making fun of Vivek? Is that what's going on here? Like like after a few hundred years, Vorin Dagoth like was like, shit. This fucking asshole called this city Vivek? Are you shitting me? How ridiculous is that? All right, fine. If the big city in Vardenfell is Vivek, then guess what the fucking mountain is, asshole? That's right, I'm calling the mountain Dagother. Fuck Red Mountain. The Citadel is called Dagother. The Crater is Dagother. The mountain soon will be Dagother. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. How about Dwemer? Saint Narivar and the Tribunal defeated the Dwemer in holy war and banished them from the face of the world for their blasphemies. Empire. Give to the Emperor only your coin, and honor only the law which is just. Ah. Huh. Okay. Imperial cult, what do you have to say about that? Imperial law supports and protects the Imperial cult. But the Nine Divines are neither gods nor worthy ancestors, and their worship is just foolish superstition. Nine Divines? 
The official religion of the Empire, the Imperial Cult, worships the Nine Divines. Okay, yada yada. These are indeed powerful spirits, but they are untrustworthy and unworthy of worship. Right. Which is, you know, <laughs> very ironic, all things considered. <laughs> all right. Tell me about Sotha Sil. Lord Sotha Sil is the mad, the Magus, is one of the three immortal god kings of Morrowind, a pillar of the tribunal, and the patron of artificers and wizards. Sotha Sil was the mightiest wizard and most wise counselor of the First Council companion and teacher of Nerevar, and Vivek. Sotha Sil is the light of knowledge and the inspiration of craft and sorcery. And, um, what do you call it? ESO actually does a lot to flesh out the character of Sotha Sil, because, of course, Sotha Sil has a very minimal appearance in Morrowind, despite being incredibly important. Saint Nerevar? The captain is the patron of warriors and statesmen. He united the Dunmer tribes into a great nation, but died leading the Dunmer to victory against the evil Dwemer and the traitorous House Dagoth at the Battle of Red Mountain. What do you think about Nords? These people are our ancient enemies. Like all man races, they are of inferior blood, but otherwise are human in every respect. Are they capable of enlightenment? Do they have souls? Who can say? <laughs> okay, Almalexia. Almalexia was the virtuous wife of Lord Nerevar, and later the consort of Lord Vivek. <laughs> Very funny the way in which Almalexia is described relative to Sothasil and relative to Vivek. Right? <laughs> Very very much of the time, right? Of the, like, era of when Morrowind was released, right? Yeah, you know, she's the wife and consort. That's it. <laughs> but I, I guess to be fair, by the time the Tribunal expansion rolls on, they very much go out of their way to completely subvert that, right? But I guess it just goes to show, like, where their heads were as Morrowind was being made and coming out, the core game at least, right? But Almalexia, the character, is very well-developed, I think, and, like, made into a very fun and interesting character with Tribunal, right? But here, it sounds very shit, right? Here, it sounds very, very shit. <laughs> All right, how about Dagoth Ur? Is the evil immortal enemy of the Tribunal Temple cult. The Temple holds Dagother and his hosts accountable for all the evils that beset the Dunmer and Morrowind. Dagother dwells in fiery caverns beneath Red Mountain, served by his kin, called Ash Vampires, and by legions of deformed monsters. Okay, sure. Well? Oh, can we go in here? Okay. Yeah, so this is the Ordinator section. All right, what do they have to say? Background. I am an Ordinator. Okay, tell me about Ghostgate. Ghostgate is a stronghold that guards the only passage through the Ghost Fence and into the blighted region of Red Mountain. Ghost Fence? The Ghost Fence is a magic wall running completely around Red Mountain. The barrier keeps blight storms and blight monsters from spreading across Vardenfell. Nervereen. We have heard the proclamation. Vivek has removed his curse upon the Nervereen and ended the perse- Oh wait, isn't this the same as- Yeah. Okay, Ordinators. The Ordinators are the holy guards and soldiers of the temple. Okay. Oh, tell me about the Boolean Armagers. The Buoyant Armagers is a small military order of the temple, exclusively dedicated to and answering to Lord Vivek. How about the Citadels? Five ancient Dwemer Citadels in the Crater of Red Mountain are occupied by Dagoth Ur and his Ash Vampire kin. 
Okay. We're watching. Sure. Thank you. Let's go on over here. All right. Huh. I don't see any bullion armagers. Okay. Oh, y'all are bullion armagers. Oh, fuck. For whatever reason, I always thought that they wore glass armor all the time. Okay. Sure. This is going to become a real problem not having those boots. <laughs> okay, this was a, a major misstep on my part. Do I have, like, different shoes that I could bind there at, at the very least? Are these shoes? I don't think so. I think that's a ring. Hair shirt. Yeah, I don't have any fucking footwear whatsoever. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Maybe we can, like, lift some glass armor or something somewhere. Okay, should we just talk to a standard buoyant armager? Hey. Hello, Lyle Schnub. The Arch Cannon has announced that Lord Vivek has select- Oh, no, wait, is this the same as before? Okay, yeah. Crater Citadels. The ancient Dwemer Citadels. On- Oh, no, wait, okay, same as before. Ghost Fence? Yeah, same. Ghost gate, same. Inside. Oh, here we go. Inside the ghost fence. All our intelligence is old. No one has ventured far inside the fence for years. This map shows the locations of the citadels of the various ash vampires. Six house creatures have become more numerous and powerful, and the most powerful can conjure powerful Daedra. Until recently, We've been able to clear routes and keep them clear, keep them clean with raids, but no longer. There are no safe refuges or services inside the fence. You must return here to rest and heal. Okay. Tell me about ordinators. The four ordinators, the four orders of ordinators, answer to the Alma Ruler in Mournhold. I didn't even know that there were four orders. Hmm. Soul sickness? Madness is a sickness in the soul. It comes from a lack of faith and a love of sin. All this talk of bad dreams and bad omens. Superstition. It's just a sign that people have abandoned the temple and fallen into greed and wickedness. Inside the ghost fence again? Okay. Same, same. Map of Red Mountain. Okay. Check here. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well? What the fuck? <laughs> this is a really bad map. This is just descriptions. The map itself doesn't show shit. This is a map of Vardenfell. This is <laughs> this is not a map of Red Mountain. What <laughs> I don't even have a point of reference. Northwest, northeast. <laughs> this is beyond useless. <laughs> okay, sure. Man, these might be the most Morrowind fucking directions of all time. I don't know. There is that one where where you you get given like incorrect directions. That one is pretty Morrowindy. Okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> why not? Why even bother including the fucking drawing? Why even? Why bother with that? I guess maybe they thought it would be too pathetic to just write down the Citadel names and be like. Uh, yeah, somewhere to the northeast. <laughs> oh, yeah, Citadel Dagoth, that's in the center. <laughs> Look, we, these are all, all of our intel is inaccurate, so have a, have a map of Vardenfell. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Sure. Great. I love that. Thank you. What did we write down? Booyant armagers at Ghostgate told me that all their intelligence is old. 
No one has ventured far inside the fence for years. They gave me a map showing the location. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. <laughs> they gave me a map showing the locations of the citadels of the various ash vampires. The six house creatures have become more numerous and powerful. And the most powerful can conjure powerful Daedra. There are no safe refuges or services inside the fence. I must return to Ghostgate to rest and heal. Okay. Great. How about this Boolean armature? They look very important. Let's see. Inside, ordinators, anything different? Oh. The Order of War fights the enemies of the temple. Most war ordinators are stationed near Red Mountain. Huh. Craters. The only approach to the crater citadels is up Foyada Isanudan from Fort Moonmoth, through the ghost fence at the fortress of Ghost Gate, and down into the crater. Tell me about yourselves, the Buoyant Armagers. The Buoyant Armagers serve the temple as champions and knights errant. Ghost fence? In the past, the ghost fence was completely effective, but now we hear reports of encounters with blighted monsters outside the fence. Yeah, also the blight storms getting outside the fence. That too. Ghost gate? Is garrison by... Okay, yeah, we've heard that. Services? House Redren maintains a hostel with beds, food, and sundries in the Tower of Dusk. Redren also offers services here for retainers and kin. The temple has healers and other services in the Tower of Dawn. Specific place. Okay. Ghostgate consists of two towers. The Tower of Dusk, the West Keep, and the Tower of Dawn, the East Keep, with a temple between the two towers, and a tunnel beneath the temple leading up Foyada Isanudun, Isanu Dawn, into Red Mountain. The Redren Hostel and Buoyant Armager Barracks are in the Tower of Dusk. The Temple Services and the Ordinator Barracks are in the Tower of Dawn. The Pilgrimage Shrine lies west of the stronghold along a path. There are no travel services out of Ghostgate. Returning to Balmora, follow Foyada Mamea, south until you pass under an ancient Dwemer Bridge. Then, watch for the road leading northwest, out of the ravine, to Fort Moonmoth and Balmora, or below that, the road leading southeast out of the ravine towards Pelagiad, Sedanin, and Point South. You know what would have been really fucking cool? This also almost reads to me as cut content. Content cut in the interest of time. But they very intentionally do not have fast travel up here, right? And that is the perfect setup for you to go and fix issues that cropped up from past fast travel, right? Like, maybe... Like, okay, Mage's Guild. Right? The Guild Guide. I could see that. You don't want them involved, right? Because they, they're they chartered by the Empire and all of that. This is strictly Tribunal Temple business. Gotta keep it on the hush-hush. We don't want the Empire involved, even though it maybe would help, but obviously the Temple would never fucking be down for that, right? checks out. However, a Silt Strider being out here makes a lot of sense to me, right? What if originally there was a Silt Strider that ran two ghost vents, right? And even helped for pilgrimages, right? Because we know that um, pilgrimages occur out here all the time, especially when it wasn't quite as dire. But, like we talked about before, how cool would it be if you could see and fight a blighted, infected, corporous silt strider. Oh my god, and it would be like a boss creature here as well. That would be incredible. It almost reads as if they, this is this would be set up for like a side quest or a big mission, right? I don't know. Where like they're they they say something along the lines of, yeah, we used to have fast travel out here. But not since the incident. Okay. Well. 
I guess that's our intel? We got the information now? Yeah, look. Ah, uh, we've got them all showing up now. Okay. Well, wait. Isn't there supposed to be, like, one more? Hold up. Okay. Hmm. No. Okay. Hang on. Quests. Citadels of the Sixth House. Oh. No dice. Okay. Still, we've been shown the citadels. I'm fairly certain we were just told that there were more, though. Right? Isn't there, like, a fifth one? Or are they including Kogarun? They may well be. Okay. Well, anyhow, like I said, we'll end this one a little bit early and conclude with a shitload of reading. Let's actually read that plans paper. Right? Let's see. Let's also unequip that. That way it's a little bit well lit. Okay. And then... Over here. Good. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a quick drink, and I may have to take a drink in the middle of this, because, like we said earlier, it is a lot to read. Like, the exposition dump continues as well. Like, <laughs> maybe they thought, like, holy shit, we got too much dialogue on Vivek for the player. We gotta split some of this off into notes and shit. <laughs> right? Or they just didn't have time. They were like, okay, we'll have this show up later. Oh, fuck. We're, we don't have any time. Budget's running running low. Just throw all the shit. Throw all the lore into fucking notes. <laughs> Put him in the last safe room. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. All right. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry. Plan to defeat Dagother. Let's find out what the fuck we're doing. The plan to defeat Dagother. For the past 20 years, the Tribunal have tried unsuccessfully to execute this plan. However, we failed because we were required to stage an assault and simultaneously maintain the ghost fence to prevent the threatened large-scale breakout of Dagother's blighted hosts. With the Nervreen leading the assault, and the Tribunal Three to devote their full energies to maintaining the Ghost Fence. This plan has a greater chance of success. Unfortunately, however, the loss of the artifacts Sunder and Keening, and the recent increase in Dagother's strength, poses new problems for the execution of the plan. Therefore, our proposed plan has the following five phases. Right, and this almost reads as if these would all be more drawn out events, and like, the locations would be significantly larger and maybe like be on par with Kogaroon in size, you know? Or maybe not on par with, but close in size. And that is definitely not the case. At least one of them is incredibly small. Anyway. First, or one, a series of aggressive raids to scout inside the ghost fence. Two, a series of aggressive raids to neutralize Dagother's Ash Vampire kin and recover artifacts from the bodies of his kin. Three, an assault of Gate Citadel Viminal to neutralize Dagoth Vemin and recover the artifact Hammer Sunder. Four, an, artif an assault on Gate Citadel Odrosal to neutralize Dagoth Odros and recover the artifact Blade Keening. Five, an assault on Citadel Dagoth with the artifacts Wraithguard, Sunder, and Keening to sever Dagother's connection to the heart of Lorcan, and thus to destroy Dagother. Yeah, we should probably equip that. I completely forgot. <laughs> it is. It does, like uh, Vivek said earlier, it does actually have good enchants on it, even beyond the main quest. Phase 1. Raids Inside the Ghost Fence. The Tribunal... Ordinators and Buoyant Armagers are familiar with the terrain, and will provide maps and current intelligence reports. The region inside the Ghost Fence is dangerous, and the Nervreen will need to be familiar with its particular challenges. After measuring skills and resources against Dagother's defenses, the Nervreen will know better how to pace a campaign, alternating raids with improving skills, getting better equipment, and stockpiling resources. Phase 2, Raids Upon Ash Vampire Citadels Dagother's kin have become 
markedly more powerful in recent decades, after remaining stable for thousands of years. If they can be individually isolated and destroyed, they will not be able to support Dagother in later stages of the war. It may also be that the dramatic increase in their power comes from items enchanted by Dagother. Salvage of such items might contribute to our resource. Phase 3. Assault on Gate Citadel Viminal. Essential to recover the artifact hammer Sunder for Phase 5. The Ash Vampire Dagoth Vemin has possession of Sunder, and probably seeks to discover the secrets of its enchantments. He may also have access to notebooks and journals of Kagranak that have survived in the Dwemer workshops of Viminal. Oh shit, we'll also need to read those, won't we? Fuck. So much reading in just a small amount of time we'll have to do, I think. Phase 4. Assault on the Gate Citadel Adrozel. Essential to recover the artifact Blade Keening for Phase 5, the Ash Vampire Dagoth Odros has possession of Keening and probably seeks to discover the secrets of its enchantments. He may also have access to notebooks and journals of Kagranak that have survived in the Dwemer workshops of Odrozel. Phase 5. Assault on Citadel Dagoth. All the previous stages are preparations for this stage. Recent expeditions show that Citadel Dagoth has undergone extensive expansion. The location will need to be explored carefully. The known route to the Heart Chamber will be well defended. Alternative routes may exist. Dagoth Ur will have anticipated our plan to destroy him by attacking the Heart, and he will almost certainly personally oppose approach to the Heart Chamber. Together the Tribunal could not defeat him and he has grown stronger since then. Admittedly, the Tribunal had the distraction of maintaining the Ghost Fence simultaneous with fighting Dagoth Ur. But, even so, the challenge seems daunting. The adoption of this phased campaign seems to offer the best chances for success. In retrospect, the Tribunal's decision to directly assault Citadel Dagoth rather than proceed step by step through lesser objectives, must be seen to have, a ser have been a serious error. The Tribunal did not feel it had, been, it had the option of a slow-paced and deliberate campaign, given that they had many other competing priorities, not the least of which was the maintenance of the Ghost Fence and the outer defenses surrounding Red Mountain. The Nerevarine, on the other hand, should be best served by a careful step-by-step -step advance, with the additional advantage of building confidence along the way, while successes would undermine Dagother's own assurance in his defenses. Empowering Kagranak's Tools Against Dagother The source of Dagother's supernatural power is the heart of Lorcan. The heart is also the source of the Tribunal's divine powers. Like a lot of this, right? Like how we were talking about a lack of exposition and like how pacing feels totally off in these last moments of the game. A lot of this just reads like raw storyboarding, you know, like raw drafts from the writer's room of like, yeah, these are plans. We'll flesh it all out when we have time, but they never had time. All right. The heart is also the source of the Tribunal's divine powers. <clears throat> During mythic times, the gods took and hid Lorcan's heart beneath Red Mountain as a punishment for creating the mortal plane. The Dwemer discovered the heart while building underground colonies. High Craft Lord Kagranak created enchanted tools intended to tap the power of the heart. The War of the First Council was fought to prevent this sacrilege. Kagranak's use of these tools and the disappearance of the Dwemer race marked the end of the war. Kagranak's tools were recovered by Lord Nerevar and Dagoth Ur. Dagoth Ur was left to guard the tools, while Nerevar came to consult with us, his advisors. In Nerevar's absence, Dagoth Ur experimented with the tools upon the heart and was corrupted. We return to discover a deranged Dagoth Ur, who refused to turn over the tools. When he attacked us, we drove him away. We left Red Mountain 
with the tools, and subsequently Sotha Sil discovered their secrets. Collectively, we used the tools to establish a connection with the heart, enabling ourselves to transform our mortal natures. Thus, we became the Tribunal. Dagothur had survived our attacks, and without the tools, in a manner not well understood, Dagothur also managed to establish a connection with the heart and to transform himself into an immortal being. Oh my god, can you believe this? It just now hit me the like double entendre, the double meaning of the tribunal, right? It's literally a tribunal on Vorin Dagoth, on Dagoth Ur. They're literally like running a tribunal on, on Dagoth Ur. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's very li <laughs> like, like this isn't some huge wild ass moment where I've got like a wild crackpot theory. This is just me being an idiot and finally realizing that, like, them calling themselves the Tribunal works in that way as well. <laughs> All right. Dagothur had survived our attacks, and without the tools, in a manner not well understood, Dagoth Ur also managed to establish a connection with the heart and to transform himself into an immortal being. Our plan to destroy Dagothur also runs the risk of destroying the Tribunal. The plan is to permanently disrupt Kagranak's enchantments upon the heart, severing connections with Dagothur and ourselves, and rendering us all once again mortal. A mortal Kagranak may then be destroyed by mundane means. The loss of godhood and the possible death of the Tribunal are judged a necessary risk and sacrifice. The normal procedure for establishing connection with the heart is a three-step process. The wearer of Wraithguard strikes the heart with the hammer sunder, causing the heart to produce a pure tone. Then the wearer of the Wraithguard strikes the heart with the blade keening, shattering the pure tone into a prism of tone shades. These tone shades are then imprinted upon the substance of the wearer of Wraithguard, giving him an immortal and divine nature. The Nerevarin will not be taught the secret rituals required to perform the third step. Instead, the Nerevarin will strike the heart with keening for a second time, causing its tones to diverge into unstable patterns of interference. Further repeated strikes with keening will further disrupt the tones, with the ultimate result of shattering and dispelling Kagranak's original enchantments binding the heart, thereby severing the heart's links with Dagothur, and with any surviving heart whites, and with the tribunal. Destroying Kagranak's enchantments on the heart will also stop the corrupt effusion of the heart's divine power, and end the blight on Morrowind. The Nerevarine may be tempted to steal the power of the heart, Dagothur and Sothasil alone know this secret. Dagothur may, in extremity, propose to teach the Nerevarin to use Kagranak's tools to become a god. We doubt that the Nerevarin is fool enough to trust Dagothur, and are content to take this risk. Be warned, the Nerevarin cannot safely equip either Keening or Sunder unless wearing Wraithguard. The Nerevarin will be injured every moment while holding either of these artifacts, unless protected by Wraithguard. Persistence will be rewarded with death. If the Nerevarin can equip an item while not wearing Wraithguard and receive no injury, the item is a counterfeit. Mm. That alludes to the alternate route and all of that. One last note. Dagoth Ur must not get hold of Wraithguard. The Nerevarine must prepare and use a recall or Almsivi intervention if there is any risk of death or capture. The Element of Surprise Dagothur will not expect you to destroy Kagranak's enchantments on the heart. He does not- see, this is- it's all written very oddly, isn't it? Right, like, suddenly, like, the nature of the note changes from, like, Speaking of the Nerevarine, and also misspelling it right here, Nerevane. <laughs> um, but uh, speaking of this person as if they are not the recipient and reader of the note. And then now here, 
it changes into as if, yeah, the Nerevarine is going to read this, right? It's so very much just fucking reeks of them being short on time, right? And just shoving all this shit, not only into dialogue with Vivek, but also just a shitload of, like, long-ass notes right behind Vivek. All right. The element of surprise. Dagother will not expect you to destroy Kagranak's enchantments on the heart. He does not know it is possible. He would not do it himself, and he knows we have never tried it. He will not believe anyone who would want to sacrifice the promise of such power. Further advancement in House Dagoth, as in all great houses, is by challenge and confrontation within the hierarchy. The Nervrine's challenges and defeats of Ash Vampires and battles with the Sixth House will be viewed in that light. But also, part of this that they don't account for, right? Like here, where, where they're like, he will not believe anyone would want to sacrifice the promise of such power, right? Part of what they, they either fully neglect or just gloss over, not fully understanding, is also that dagoth -er would not believe fully that the Nerevarine could not only be would that they dagoth -er doesn't believe that the Nerevarine is not only incapable of doing all of this but also would not be willing to do it because dagoth -er doesn't think that the Nerevarine would fully want to go against them right because all the way up to the bitter end Right? Spoilers. dagoth -er still reaches out and tries to rekindle the friendship, or more than friendship, with the Nerevarine. Right? dagoth -er wants to continue what once was. There is still that, like, love, that longing. Right? And here, this very clearly reads, even in this weird-ass way that this is delivered, right? How Morrowind, right? That it's such a weird, fucked up way that's delivered, but still manages to get across this incredible nuance. That the tribunal doesn't have that for the Nerevarine. Right? Dagoth Ur still has this, like, friendship, this love, this passion, this care for the Nerevarine, this reincarnated version of this person that they cared for, that they loved either as a friend or as a lover, however your interpretation, right? But the tribunal does not see it, right? They don't weigh it in the same way. Or at the very least, they don't put it down in writing, which I guess is also open to interpretation, right? Whether or not they formally acknowledge it and they're hiding it or they're just ignorant of it. They're oblivious to it, right? I kind of really like the reading that that Dagother has got heart. Right? That Dagother has what they don't. Dagother still has heart for the Nerevarine, for Nerevar. And they don't. It has waned. Right? That love has waned from the tribunal. They do not have that anymore. Man, that is very fucking good. Fuck me. Of course, right? Like, if we go deeper into the, like, uh, theoretical, right, open to interpretation, love story of Morrowind, it plays in even nicer with the idea that Morrowind is a story about heartbreak at its center, right? Okay. Dagother and his kin may assume the Nerevarine's ambition is to control the heart. Given that assumption, it is only reasonable that the Nerevarine would try to defeat each of Dagother's subordinates in turn, working up to Dagother. If the Nerevarine can defeat Dagother and control the heart, so much the better. But logically, the Nerevarine would wish rise as but logically the Nerevarine would wish rise as high in the hierarchy as possible before cutting a deal with head of the house. Dagother should try to recruit the Nerevarine into House Dagoth. It may be possible to pretend to join him, then betray him. However, any attempt to deceive him will be very risky. 
House Dagoth has a tradition of subterfuge and treachery, and because he is a deceiver, he will expect deception. But ultimately, it is also, I feel, the weakness, right? Like, there is some expectation of it, but so too, I feel there is expressed this weakness, right? And you see that as well throughout the, the main quest via the dreams, right? And then, like, assaulting the first six house gate, uh, not gate, base for uh, the main quest, right? There is still that, like, wish from Dagothar that, like, yo, come come join, right? We're, we're, we still have our doors open to you, you know? Which is also, like, very frequently, um, even in this playthrough, I've seen comments of people saying, like, it would be cool if you could do a, a playthrough where you do side with them, you know? Even if it is, like, a more sped up ending than what you already get, right? Where it's like, yeah, turns out the Nervarine was kind of uh, an asshole, <laughs> right? It really fucked everything up for everybody, but hey, at least they were friends and lovers in the end or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Closing remarks. We place no compulsion upon the Nervarine to adhere to the plans described here. We believe that they offer the best chance of destroying Dagothur, but we have also chosen to place our trust in the Nervarine's judgment and skill. Frankly, we see no alternative. If there are doubts or questions, speak with Vivek. He has agreed to serve as the Nervarine's guide and counselor for this campaign. It may be that if the Nervarine succeeds, the tribunal will not survive. Such sentiments as might have been expressed to the tribunal should, in that case, be addressed to the land and people of Morrowind. May the happy convergence of fortune and prayer meet in our destiny. On behalf of Lady Amalexia and Lord Sothasil, Vivek. Yeah. Man. Really wild shit, right? It didn't even occur to me that there was a possible reading there for... Right? For Vorin Dagoth. Dagoth or has heart, right? Shit, I like that a lot. Okay. Alright. It's a little on the nose, but I, I kind of very much appreciate it. Like I said, it, it's a story about heartbreak. <laughs> Alright. When next we come back, I suppose we will begin our assault on those bases. Maybe we will try to get some sort of uh, lower armor equipment or whatever. And of course, we can't forget... We very much need to talk to this old bald man over here, who is very important. Until next time, please take care of each other.